Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we have the 2022 Ford Maverick XLT here at our Steeda Valdosta location. I'm really excited because we have our in-house engineers, our welders, all hands on deck going over this vehicle, and I was able to steal it away from them just for a little bit, do a quick video, kind of tell you about the features, the engine, uh, the different options this one has in comparison to some of the other trim levels, but enough of me talking, let's get this thing rolling. Starting off at the front, I'm a big fan of the front of the Maverick. It's definitely something a little different from what we've seen at Ford, but you got the LEDs down at the bottom and I'll show you them really quick. But, I mean, it's a pretty cool look. And you wouldn't really expect LEDs out of a halogen style housing like that, or reflector style housing, uh, but everything like looks good. Um, and I know that between the XL, the XLT and the Lariat, there are different grill options. I'm excited to see what the aftermarket come up, comes up with on that. Uh, but real quick, let me pop that hood. One thing to note, it is a two-time pull on the hood, uh, the hood lever to pop the hood. Prop rod. We'll have to do something about that, but this here is the two liter EcoBoost motor. Um, all in all, I mean, it's, it's, it's very similar to what you would see in the Bronco Sport and the Escape, obviously, because it's on the same platform. Um, but uh, this thing's pretty stout, puts out some decent power for, for what it is. Um, definitely some, uh, some options for upgrades in terms of uh, it being a turbo. Uh, a tune will easily bump things up. I'm excited to see what intercooler options are going to be available and some other things like that. But uh, yeah, 5W30 oil, kind of still have that Ram air effect similar to the Escape and the Bronco Sport. Both have that right from the grill. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool setup. We'll keep going. sure it's latched in there but moving around to the side XLT badging right here with that faux um, kind of scoop very similar to the new 2021 f-150 um, makes total sense they kind of have that uh, branding going on amongst all of their models uh, you got the XLT wheels here with continental tires I know a lot of people that are looking to modify these trucks will be adding different wheels and tires and things like that. And again, like I was saying, either uh, lifting or lowering them. Um, owner already tinted windows. We'll keep going towards around the back and then eventually get inside. Um, gas caps right here, you push open the easy fill cap, which is very nice. Right there. And I was talking with the owner. Um, he actually had this tonneau cover sitting in his house before the Maverick even got to uh, his driveway. So um, this is something he added on. You'll be able to see these, these types of parts and many others right here at CETA.com to purchase for your Maverick. Uh, but looking at the back, you don't have the assist. Again, you had to skimp on a couple things, um, you know, in comparison to the F-150, but this thing is so light, just let her down easy. You do have the option to take this and move it up higher depending on uh, what you have in the back. Uh, it actually brings the tailgate up to the same level as the wheel wells in the bed. Uh, that way, um, if you have drywall, um, depending on how large drywall is, sheets of plywood, things like that, you can uh, strap everything down accordingly. In addition to that, you have straps here and it doubles as a bottle opener, which is pretty cool. Um, one little thing that I was pretty darn excited about. Let's get some light in here. Check this out. Got a little latch that comes off. This cover pulls off. He's already got some ratchet straps in here, which are pretty cool. But check this out. 
there's a false floor in here and you can pull out there's even more storage down there just a little the little quirks about this truck are so cool i feel like months after owning it you're still gonna be learning things about it very well thought out on ford's part oh i gotta put those ratchet straps back in there and depending on what package you get what trim level you get um, this particular model does have the the tow package on it you can see the tow hitch right there 4,000 pound capacity um, you can see you have your different connectors here the giveaway for it being the 4,000 pound tow package is that you do have this larger connector versus just the four pin but again a lot of different options on this truck. Another thing to add is, depending on what option or how you option your Maverick out, you can get an outlet here in the bed of the truck, you know, whether you need to charge something up or uh, you know, run a saw off of it, very similar to the 21 F-150 and even the F-150 Lightning. Um, not as much in terms of power there, but pretty cool. Um, another thing to point out, again, ratchet strap, strap down, toe down, tie down points, awesome. Uh, but check this out, Got a little cap here, you pull this out, and it's plugged into a dead, a dead plug here, 12 volt DC. So they're already giving you provisions from the factory for accessories. That is awesome. The, gone are the days where you have to splice into things and all that sort of stuff. Ford's already giving you options from the factory to be able to use different aftermarket modifications with your Maverick. Again, awesome, awesome stuff. So go ahead and close this. Next, we'll take you to the inside. Now, looking at the back of this thing, I love this two-tone color with the orange stitching. Just one of those things that really brings this up in terms of luxury level. Got this cool little trash can. That, now, that you can use it as a trash can, uh, but it is included. It comes in here. Um, the owner just used that to put some stuff in there. But outside of that, look at all the space you have. And on top of that, um, one thing to note, the hybrids will have uh, the regular car battery back here because um, they need extra space up front of the hood, but it locks in place. Um, and if you need to pull it back down, you just pull this right back down in the place. I love the interior of this thing. It just screams cool, uh, especially when you think about the value that you're getting with it. Let's start it up. Starts right up, very quiet. Got the digital uh, display right in the center. Two dials on either side. The Lariat does have a larger uh, display that you get in the gauge cluster. You have uh, the eight inch touchscreen that's available on all models. Um, now you will have to, I'm not sure if the Lariat does have navigation out of the box or if you option it, you can option it with that, uh, but you will have to lean on. Nowadays, everyone has uh, Android or, or CarPlay. Just plug in and you'll be able to get your navigation right there. Um, but, uh, now, I'll be honest, a lot of this is hard, but that's okay. That's okay because you're going to be doing things with this vehicle that um, are a little bit, uh, th that these parts and these things are going to need to be able to take some abuse. Now, looking at the center cluster, you do have automatic climate control, which is nice. You also have the option here to do what you need to do. Fan speed pops up on the front uh, display here. I'm not sure what auto high, auto medium, auto low. Interesting. Huh. Anyways, um, then you have your uh, temperature on the right-hand side. The lariats, and uh, depending on how you option out your Maverick, you'll be able to have wireless charging here. You have a nice little display for your phone there. And uh, I also will note, You've got USB-C and regular USB here to connect up to uh, for CarPlay and uh, Android Auto. 
again, moving down the center here, you do have the dial. They're including that on a lot of these vehicles now. But think of it this way. The Ford GT has a dial, so you have the same kind of dial out of a Ford GT. Pretty awesome. <laughs> um, electronic parking brake, uh, different driving modes. Uh, looks like a slippery. Traction control. Traction control on and off. Auto start stop. On and off. And what is this? Outside of that, really love the interior of this thing, but enough talking about it. Let's get driving. All right, 2022 Ford Maverick. Call me a nerd, but I'm actually really excited about driving this truck. It's uh, been a topic of conversation for a lot of people in the car and truck world, especially Ford fans, and rightfully so. I mean, this car starts, truck, car, truck, truck, starts under $20,000 for the XL, you can option it up all the way to 35 something, 36 something um, with the Lariat and the uh, power connections and the, and the tailgate and all the other awesome options. Um, this particular one is an XLT. So kind of that middle of the road approach. Um, it's a two liter EcoBoost with the all wheel drive, no hybrid. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be driving this thing. Um, ooh, automatic climate control, that's awesome. And the interior. Man, it, it is a really cool combo on this XLT. And I know that between the XL, the XLT, and the Lariat, um, they do have different um, kind of interiors, um, solid colors. And, and But the XLT, I like it. It's uh, kind of got an urban feel. Because um, you think about the average customer that's going to be driving this kind of vehicle, they're going to be looking for something a little bit more utilitarian, a little bit more... Um, uh, able to pick things up from, you know, uh, the hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever, um, for home projects, things like that. Don't necessarily need to tow a boat. Um, but, oh yes, 4,000 pound tow package on this one as well. So, um, in a pinch you could tow, I don't know, a jet ski or something that's under 4,000 pounds. Um, but I'm going to stop talking. We're going to start driving. Uh, look at that auto air conditioning that's awesome and it does have uh, the 8 inch touchscreen which all trim levels do have um, yeah that's nice and uh, it does rely on CarPlay for navigation or Android Auto depending on which phone you have but uh, outside of that the standard dial shifter that you're seeing in a lot of these Fords um, nowadays all wheel drives nice too I mean um, for those of you in the northern states uh, during the winter time, um, front wheel drive gets the job done. It, it certainly does um, in the high, for those of you that are looking at the hybrids and things like that. Um, but all wheel drive, I mean, you can do a lot of things. Um, and in terms of the aftermarket, a lot of people are excited about modifying these things, which kind of, kind of surprises me, um, <laughs> given the fact uh, of the type of people that are going to be buying these types of trucks. Um, but it does, it makes sense if you think about it, because you're, you're not paying that much for this vehicle. I mean, if you get the, the base model, you're under 20,000, um, like I said, all the way up to 35. And even nowadays, the average new vehicle is, as far as I know, definitely above that 35 number. So you're coming in nice and pretty, which means you have some extra, extra money to roll into, uh, some modifications. Oh, it's got the auto start stop. I wonder if there's a button to turn that off. There is right here on the center console. But uh, they've got electronic parking brake. Um, and you're probably wondering why the guys at Steeda have this vehicle. And uh, you guessed it, we'll be making parts for this vehicle. We had our R&D and engineering team going over um, pretty, pretty much every nook and cranny on this truck. Um, after I'm done with it, I'll be dropping it back off with them so they can continue to uh, develop parts for this truck and this platform. It is shared with the Escape and the Bronco Sport, so that kind of makes things a little bit easier. Um, but uh, for those of you that are watching, comment below. Let us know if you, like for example, if you're looking at springs, um, do you want lowering springs or lift springs? I've been been pretty active in, uh, or, or at least looking around in, in the Facebook groups for these Mavericks. 
and um, I'm seeing a pretty good split. So it's interesting, you know, you look at um, the F-150, for example, and, and that market, um, a lot of, the majority of the people are looking to lift those leveling kits, big wheels and tires, all-terrain tires, you know, uh, mud terrains, things like that. There is a lowered F-150 market, obviously, especially when you get into that regular cab short bed um, sort of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's pretty evenly split with this Maverick, which is exciting. Um, because that means there's going to be a, a wide variety of these modified Mavericks on the road. Um, automatic. Now, uh, this does have the two liter EcoBoost, so um, it does have the eight speed automatic transmission. If you were to get the hybrid, um, you'll go ahead and get the, uh, the CVT, which uh, in listening and watching some um, other people's comments about the CVT, it is a little bit annoying in terms of sound, but aside from that, as you would expect from any CVT. Um, but uh, aside from that, it's barely noticeable when you're cruising down the highway. And um, I was talking to the owner of this uh, Maverick and even with the two liter EcoBoost, the all wheel drive, he drove up from Jacksonville, which is about two hours from our Valdosta, Georgia facility. And um, I'm looking at 30.9 miles per gallon in a truck. You know, yes, no, it's not a F-150 or even a Ranger um, or, or a Super Duty. So you're not gonna have all the benefits of those much larger vehicles, um, but 31 miles per gallon. It has a bed in the back if you need it. Um, you know, you got enough room for five people. Um, you, you really can't complain. Um, and with an entry level vehicle like this, you would expect, um, I don't know, cheaper parts um, or, or, or cheaper things on the inside of the vehicle. And I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you, I love the way the inside of this Maverick looks and feels. Um, and especially uh, you add like window tint, things like that to make it a little bit more personalized for you. Um, this owner did do that so that's nice um but uh and i know down in the center console i believe the lariats are i forgot which package it is but the lariats do have that wireless uh charging um down in the center console and again i know you're getting up into the 30s at that point or close to it but uh shoot <laughs> this is a, a heck of a, a, a an entry-level package um in 2022 um, that you're getting for the value here. Um, you think about base model vehicles or entry level vehicles of this price range, even just a couple years ago, and you're not getting a lot of the things that are that Ford has included on the Maverick from from the get go. Um, let's get on it a little bit. It does have driving modes, so auto start stop. There's a button right here for driving. Normal, tow, haul, makes sense, tow package, slippery, eco, and sport. So it does have a sport mode. Obviously, no paddle, sh paddle shifters, that's okay. Um, but uh, I gotta say, these orange accents are really cool. Um, but anyways, uh, sport mode did drop it a gear. Throttle response is a little bit more um, edgy. It gets up and goes. The two liter EcoBoost, it's the same as the Escape we drove um, a few months ago. If you check out that video on our YouTube channel, you can you can see a little bit more about that. But uh, all in all, man. The price point is just what blows me away so much on this, on this truck. Um, you know, if you're the type of person that lives in a suburban area or even a city um, and is looking for a vehicle that does it all for a great, great price point, um, this is the way to go. You know, if you're in that suburban area or in the city, um, you're not really going to have room for, <laughs> oh, it did, it did a cool downshift just coming up to a stoplight. Um, but you're not going to have the room for a big full-size truck. You're just, you're just not, um, unless you have some property. And again, that's pretty expensive too in, in those tight um, populated areas. So whew, this kind of does it all. 
and it's small, it's nimble, has pretty good steering response right off the bat. A um, little bit of sway back and forth, but uh, stay tuned. We will have some parts uh, coming through the pipeline from Steeda on the Maverick, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and again, let us know what you're looking for, what you want to see from Steeda um, on these trucks, because uh, you know there's a lot of lot of options here, a lot of different routes to go. Um, like I was explaining, that off-road versus street mentality. Um, you know, do, do people intend to go camping or um, taking these things off-road um, on the weekends, uh, or? You know, are you looking for more of a street setup where you want to lower it, get some more lower profile tires, um, you know, a, a good set of uh, maybe 18 inch wheels, um, really depends on, on what you're looking to, to go for, but interesting. So in sport mode, it does turn the auto start stop off. Um, not sure if other Ford vehicles do that. I'm sure they've incorporated that um, logic into those, but that's kind of a nice feature. Um, so again, in sport mode, I was kind of mid-throttle and got on it a little bit coming around that turn, um, and it didn't drop a gear. It already had me um, kind of up in the RPM range, which was, which was nice. Um, so you can have some fun with this thing. And let's be honest, those street guys, even the off-road guys, I know they're going to be wanting to tune these things and see what you can pull out of the 2-liter EcoBoost. And thankfully, it is a, uh, a, a pretty well-known and well-established engine um, that allows you to um, jump, jump pretty quickly on, on getting them tuned up and, and uh, get in, driving past some of these other vehicles that are parked on the side of the road here just past two F-150s, and this guy's small. He's a, he's a little little guy, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, shoot, I got a, um, looks like an 09, 09 to 14 F-150 in front of me here, and uh, he's, he's not that much bigger. Stop here. Make sure no. And like I was saying, in comparison to the F-150 and the Ranger and the other Super Duty, um, yeah, if you're looking at the current model year, uh, there definitely is, you know, uh, a size difference when you're looking at the Maverick uh, versus those other vehicles. But that's part of the reason why you're you're getting the Maverick in the first place. You want that good gas mileage. You want that utilitarian that. Um, aspect. You want the, a small people hauler. You want something that's going to fit in tight places for the suburbanites and and uh, and people that live in cities and things like that. So there's a lot of benefits in a great price point on this Mavic right out of the box. And like I was saying earlier, you have the 09 to 14 F-150 that was in front of me as I was driving through town, and um, it's not that much bigger <laughs> than than this 2022 Maverick. So. Anyways, I digress. Comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are about the 2022 Ford Maverick. Anything that you want to see in particular from Steeda on the Maverick. And uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get a notification on your phone next time a Steeda video drops. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.